Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a Saturday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go up to our friends over in Queensland in particular. And of course, we head to the Gold Coast in particular. And of course, speak with the Southport Sharks, uh, under-17 girls uh, premiership team, uh, which they won the premiership about a month ago now. And of course, uh, we've got two very special guests on the show. Of course, uh, they were both captains and vice captains of that premiership team. Of course, their name's Casey and Maggie. They join us right now. Thanks, both of you, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. No worries. Well, also, I'll get both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us what position both of you played on Grand Final Day. So, my name's Casey, and I played in the midfield on Grand Final Day. My name is Maggie, and I played uh, forward most of the game. Tell us a bit about the season. Um, I guess, firstly, were you optimistic that you were going to get a season at all back in March? And then secondly, how good was it to at least get a season, even though it might have been shortened? Oh, it was just amazing. Like, I, I seriously just didn't think that we'll get a season underway. So it was just unbelievable. And also to win the grand final, obviously, is a big achievement. And, uh, yeah, it was just awesome. And oh, it's just an amazing feeling to get a season underway. Yeah, it was a bit questionable at the start if we would get a season in. So um, everyone was, we kept our group chat going. So yes. we were all pretty hopeful, but yeah, really grateful to have a season underway. Tell us a bit about the season itself leading up to the grand final. And was there a particular game in the season that was the real turning point? Um, so I guess throughout the season, we played against Broadbeach, who we actually won the grand final against a few times. And both times we lost to them, but I think it was, We'd lost a game to Jim Boomba throughout the season and we ended up the next game after that running over the top of them. And that was a real team game. We won that as a team. So we were pretty happy with ourselves and we knew then that if we went really hard um, and put everything on the line that we could we could do it. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you lost to the team uh, that you played in the grand final, which you beat, uh, Broadbeach. How confident were you just going into the grand final, knowing that you, you didn't beat them at all throughout the home and away season? Um, it was a bit of a weird one. I think there was a lot of people that were obviously nervous. And I think there, was, there wasn't much confidence, I don't think. But um, we just said, just go out there and play, play your role. And if you play your role, we'll just come away with the win. So, um, but yeah, it was just... Thank God we got the win and it was awesome. But, yeah. yeah, we knew we could do it. We just had to play our style of game instead of trying to adjust to theirs. And once we did that, we we went with it. Was it less pressure in the grand final considering that, you know, all the pressure was on Broad Beach considering how well they went throughout the season and obviously they beat you twice throughout the home and away season. Uh, was there was a sense of relief that you had nothing to lose in regards to... Now, the expectations was on Broad Beach to win it? Um, a little bit. I mean, we have a, a bit of a rivalry with Broad Beach. I think the last four grand finals have been us against Broad Beach. I yeah. think that's right. So um, I think there was a little bit of pressure because we lost the last grand final to them as well. So we really wanted to try and pip them this time. Um, so I think I think there was a little bit of pressure, but a good amount. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure. But um, yeah, I've been playing for Southport since I've been 12. So we tired the coach. So um, it was just amazing to win against Ball Beach and yeah, they're a bit of anim enemies. So um, yeah, it's good to get the win. Now we'll, we'll get to that rivalry uh, against Broad Beach in a moment. Um, but uh, I guess, tell us about the grand final itself. And when did, was there a particular point in the game that you got the chance to sort of enjoy the moment knowing that you've won it? Oh, no. I think there was like two minutes to go and yeah. we were like nine points down or something. It was insane. It was so close. And oh, it was just a, oh, I don't even know. It was just a very tough game. And um, credit to the girls we pushed through. And just that last, I think there was 13 seconds. And yeah, we got the win. It was just amazing. Yeah, I think within the last 13 seconds, Maggie kicked the winning goal. And I think half the team just ran across the field to congratulate her. So that was a pretty mm. special moment. Uh, great segue, Casey, to my next question. I'm going to, I will ask Maggie. Um, now, Maggie, you, as Casey mentioned, you kicked the last goal to win the Premiership. Tell us a bit about it and what was your approach to uh, that goal? Um, well, it wasn't actually just me doing it all. Um, it was obviously a team effort and um, it was just 
the ball just came down and um, got spoiled by Broad Beach and I just went and swooped on it and, and uh, kicked the goal. So, but it was a team effort. It wasn't just me and my, in like individually. Uh, it was a team and it was a massive team effort. And I'm really proud of the girls pushing through that last 13 seconds. So yeah, I got a bit nerve wracking at the end. I celebrated a lot. So, and then, <laughs> and then the ball went up and into the middle and went down Broad Beach's way. And I got a bit nervous for a minute. So, um, but yeah, it was just an amazing feeling and it was awesome. How good was it to uh, hear the final siren and you looked up the scoreboard and you were in front? Yeah, well, the um, the oval that we were actually playing on, the siren, we couldn't really hear it the whole mm. game. <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone had to run on the field blowing a whistle saying the game's over, like yeah. stop. And we were we were all just ecstatic. We all immediately all ran together and were cheering. And I think our coach was the most excited. He jumped jumped for joy. So yeah. it, was a, it was a really good feeling. Awesome. Sorry, I've got to ask this question. So you just couldn't hear the siren at all where you were playing? Uh, mostly, no. no. Yeah. Especially at the end, no. Was it a sense of relief or, I guess, excitement when it happened? I think a bit of both, actually. Mm. I think I think more of a relief, though. I think I'm just so proud of the girls for um, putting in the effort um, the whole game and we just kept going, kept fighting, and we are down, like, a lot at half time. So it was awesome just come away with the win but I think it was a bit of both and mm. yeah we had a massive celebration back here at my house and it was awesome so yeah uh, it was amazing definitely think it was a bit of both but we knew that all season we we could beat them if we put our minds to it so that was the sense of relief but we were all so excited we were just just screaming and cheering and yeah tell us a bit about your premiership coach Ty wow so Ty actually hasn't had a daughter in the team ever so he's been coaching the 17s and 15s teams on and off occasionally for how long now? Uh, since 2015. Yeah, so he's been quite a few amazing. years. Yeah. Um, he puts so much effort into it, so much time away from footy, a lot of thought, a lot of phone calls go around mm -hmm. throughout the season. So he's very dedicated and, and I think he really wanted this premiership just as much as we did. So it was great to get that for not only ourselves, but for our coach as well. Yeah. Now, of course, both you've been the captains and the vice captain uh, of the team. I guess, what did the premiership mean to both of you as captains and vice captains, and especially to share the moment together? Oh, it was just amazing. I couldn't really believe it. As Kay said, we didn't hear the siren, but I just just to see everyone just come and jump on each other, it was seriously for Ty. I seriously, when I kicked that goal, I just pointed at Ty. I was like, that one's for you. So, um, yeah, it was just unbelievable it was awesome yeah look um to be honest the team that we had this year the camaraderie that we had I think it was one of the best teams that I've ever played in yeah not necessarily skill wise but um relationship wise we all really wanted to do it for each other so it was just a really proud moment when we mm. won I was like my, my girls like we did it yeah. it was a great feeling yeah now on top of that now obviously the 13s won it early in the day uh, obviously uh, the the same women's team won it uh, a couple of weeks before that I guess uh, how good is it to be at a club that uh, especially this year have won three premierships yeah it's pretty crazy and a really yeah. exciting time I guess um, on the Gold Coast I'd say Southport is one of the best pathway mm. for girls we've got under 11s girls teams all the way through to women now so it's a really good pathway for girls and a good club to be at and it was a bit of inspiration seeing the women win the premiership a couple of weeks before. And that was really when we started to go, right, this is our time now. So it's, yeah, it was awesome. And to share it with not just our teammates, but the whole club was really cool. Yeah, it was awesome to get the win. I've been here since like a long time now, since 2016. So it was awesome just to get another premiership under the belt. And hopefully we can do that next year as well and go back to back. So yeah, it'll be awesome. Now let's talk a bit about the uh, the premiership presentation and all that. Now I believe you've had a very special guest uh, at we the premiership celebrate uh, presentations. We've uh, uh, made one or two of the Gold Coast Suns uh, AFLW players uh, that turned up. Um, tell us what how special was that and what did that mean to both of you? Uh, obviously that meant a lot. Um, seeing them on TV and um, doing what they do best, it's awesome and. Uh, especially the girl beside me got best on ground. So that was amazing <laughs> to watch and um, her get presented. But yeah, it was just awesome and um, good experience. And yeah. Yeah, we had um, Jamie Stanton present our awards. And 
I'm pretty sure she was the Gold Coast's best and fairest. So that was really cool to have someone like so great and who works hard at their footy um, help us through the ranks kind of thing. And it was just a bit special. Now, you mentioned about Jamie Stan, who uh, I guess also plays at Quaffle W for a completely different club uh, yep. altogether. <laughs> no, we near the Gold Coast. Have you, when you got the chance to meet her and all that, I'm sure you, you had a photo with her after the game yep. uh, and all that. Did you try to maybe lure her down to the Gold Coast um, and <laughs> go for Southport? Oh, look, I hope so. The women's team isn't in the Quaffle yet. I think um, the Sharks are really pushing to get the team into the Quaffle because we definitely have the facilities and players and the people that want to get it there. So mm. I'm hoping that if we get a Quaffle team, she would try and come down. We'd really love to have her yeah. with her talent. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Did she give you any advice in regards to where you, both you want to go with your footy? Yeah, she just said to work hard and just keep going at it. And, um, you know, obviously we love our footy. So she said work hard and, if you know, it pays off and, um, yeah, just keep going at it and just enjoy it. So I, Yeah, I think we would have gotten a bit more um, advice if we weren't so excited. I think we're a bit wrapped up in the moment. So yeah. <laughs> we kind of were just, like, ecstatic about the Premiership. So, yeah. yeah. Now I have to ask, who got to hold the Premiership Cup first? I did with my coach Ty, so that was an amazing feeling. We lifted it up and we, the whole team just started cheering. So yeah. that was pretty special. Yeah. Now, now, on top of that, how good was it before everyone else swarmed on tears? No, it was it was so good just to have like that in our hands. Like, what we've been training since January with the whole COVID thing coming in, and we had to stop, and then being able to come back, it was a great feeling to finally lift that cup up after all the hard work that we'd put in. So mm-hmm. it was really awesome. But then again, when the girls came over, it was mm-hmm. great because I got to share it with my teammates. So uh, now I can see you got your premiership medals around your necks, which I'll get both you to show to our uh, viewers now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the question I want to ask both of you is, how long did you wear your medals around your necks for? And did either of you sleep with it? Yes, Ooh. I slept with it. It was, oh, I just, I had it on all night and uh, the morning uh, the next day. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome. But, yeah. Yeah, we um, Maggie had everyone back here at hers. So that was pretty cool. And I think I actually, mm-hmm. one of the girls took my medals home by accident. So I was wearing it around my neck <laughs> up until then. Um, but I've got it back now, so safe now <laughs> yeah. now i know you're not meant to do this COVID and all that sort of things but did either of you kiss the premiership cup oh yeah we did yeah <laughs> just a sneaky sneaky little kiss yeah like Maggie's, yeah yeah <laughs> now i was going to get back to this question i'm going to now ask now of course you mentioned about the rivalry with your southern gold coast rival uh in broad beach obviously you played it with uh, against each other for I guess the four seasons in finals. Um, is the is the rival between yourselves and Broad Beach real? Considering you've played against each other for the trying to get that premiership for the last four seasons, and are you friends with your with Broad Beach off the field? Um, so I'll start off because it's quite a funny story actually. Look, um, you can always feel the it's a bit tense between the teams when we're playing against each other and we always go really hard at it. But I actually now go to school with half the Broad Beach girls and (laughs) the opposing team's captain. So that's kind of funny, but they're actually the lovely girls. I love hanging out with them at school. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Maggie? Uh, Yeah, massive uh, rivalry. There's, um, yeah, it's awesome. But um, yeah, they've been, I guess, uh, enemies since... 20 I think 16 I think so yeah it's uh it's amazing did have any you try to convince them to maybe uh swing across to the other side of uh the Gold Coast look I think um quite a few girls are moving up next year because it is an under 17s team so um we're getting fresh people through our 15s and they'll be getting fresh people through theirs so um I think we with the rivalry we like to keep keep to our club a little bit yeah. so we're like, kind of like no nah, we're all good <laughs> yeah it's awesome now of course uh, I believe uh, at the presentation obviously both teams had one player I uh, got presented from Jamie Sten um with an award um I think it was now 
you might as well tell us about your teammate that, that got the award from Jamie at the presentation. I can't remember exactly what she actually won, uh, but uh, you can you can tell us straight away who, who that person was and what she won. It was this girl beside me here. <laughs> um, yeah, just she's amazing. She's, uh, I think, the best captain I've ever had. Um, so, yeah, she's a, an amazing player and very proud of her and um, just keep going at it. And a draft is next year, so very excited for that one. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was the um, the best on ground award. So I was, I was so lucky because we had a great team in the grand final and everyone played a really good game. So I was very grateful for that. Yeah. How good was to get it from a, from a Gold Coast Sun player? It, it was pretty special. Again, um, Jamie Stanton is probably a very hardworking person and the Sun's best player according to their votes. So it was yeah. pretty special to have someone to look up to that we look up to to present the award to me. Yeah. Now, how did both of you get involved in footy and why did you choose it? Uh, well, I've got a massive footy family. Um, they absolutely love it. So. Um, yeah, well, I started playing with uh, Surface Demons when I was about 12 or 11. So I've been playing for a very long time now, but I just love it. Go for, we both go for the Bombers, so <laughs> great, um, great team but um, it's down in Melbourne. But yeah, we, I just love footy and I always have and since I've been like really little. So I um, absolutely love it. Mm. Awesome. So um, I was born in Melbourne originally and my family live in Coffs Harbour and I live up here for footy bit of a funny story but I actually didn't start playing footy until I moved to Coffs. Uh, I think I was about 10 years old and I was playing in an under 11s boys teams. There was no girls teams back then so I played with the boys for about three years which I think gave me my foundation and the love for the game. I've always loved the game and my dad said he never thought he'd be a footy dad because he had two daughters but he, he's pretty happy with what's turned out. Now, I believe Coss actually also won a women's uh, premiership recently as well. So, uh, women's uh, won the premiership, so that was pretty cool to see. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that right, right at the start, what position that both of you played on the field. If you had a preferred position where you'd like to convince your coaches to put you, where would that be? Um, so, I play between the midfield and centre half back. Um, but I played most of the season through the midfield, and in 17s, I like to do that. So, I was pretty happy with where I was. but. If I got a rest, I would have liked to go in the back line. That would have been nice, yeah. I would have just liked to stay in the forward line, love kicking goals. So, but yeah, I like to go into the midfield sometimes and um, get some clearances. But uh, yeah, I, don't know, I think just uh, <laughs> forward would do for now. Now, what does the sport of football mean to both of you, especially playing there at Southport? Oh yeah, it means a lot, um, especially Southport, such a great club and I've uh, been here for a long time, as I said before, so I oh, just, amazing club and very proud of them, especially through the COVID year. So um, yeah, so amazing club and amazing sport. Love it. Yeah, this year has been pretty big for me with footy and COVID. So I was going to boarding school up here and I now live with some family friends and I'm finishing year 12 off at PBC. But um, the, everyone at the club has just been amazing yeah. for me, not being able to go home for quite some time because of the border closure. So the club's just been a great support. Everyone's been there for me, everything. Everyone's done more than they have needed to so it's we call our team a family and it yeah. really is the club is so great Amazing. and i love it and footy really kept me going this year mm -hmm. because it was a bit hard you know not being able to go home and see my family so the sport has really brought me with some good friends good mates that i'll have forever so i'm very grateful for it casey um you just mentioned about that i guess obviously um your family um is on the other side of the border um at the moment how difficult has that been and is there any point that you you're hoping to maybe return back to see your family again yeah well the borders just opened up now to cough so i'm thinking a weekend very soon mm -hmm. i'll make a trip down i'm definitely looking forward to that um it was a bit hard throughout the season um especially in the holidays not knowing where I was staying the whole time, but Maggie and her family really took me in for quite some time. So again, the footy family coming out and yeah. So it, it has been hard, but I've had a good support group up here. So I'm pretty happy. Now I have to ask, how good is it to, uh, to share the, the captaincy, vice captaincy roles? And especially how good is it to play with each other on the same team? You might as well give each other some love. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But, uh, yeah, this is our last year actually playing together for 17s. I still have a year next year, but um, yeah, she's amazing, amazing captain. And um, she's really inspirational. And I really 
she really took me uh, under her wing and um, yeah, she's amazing. And it was awesome to share the captaincy together and um, with another girl, Giselle as well on the team. So yeah, it was amazing and just, She's an amazing person and proud of her. So, yeah, like Maggie said, we have um, another vice captain as well, Giselle Davis, and she's an absolute weapon. She's a machine. <laughs> she works so hard. So that was pretty special. And um, she was one of my first kind of friends when I came into Southport in the team because Maggie actually wasn't in our team last year. So um, to share it with her and Mags has been really special because they've probably been my closest friends up here through the last few months, kind of helping me through everything that's been going on. Um, you know, this one's got somewhere to go next year. She's back at, um, at Southport and hopefully I'm hoping the girls can get another premiership, which would be awesome to see. Um, but I wouldn't have wanted to play the season and share the captaincy with anyone else other than Maggie and Giselle. So yeah, great, great team, great leadership group, I think. I want to ask both of you this question, which is, um, do you have any future ambitions in the sport of AFL considering Casey, this is, this was your last year in juniors? Yep, so I actually moved up to the Gold Coast for AFL. Um, that's why I left Coffs Harbour. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping to make the AFLW next year, but I've just got to work hard and I'm not sure what Quaffle Club I'll be going to next year. It all depends on if Southport get a team and what other clubs are interested. So um, yeah, this year coming is my draft year. So it's pretty exciting, but scary yeah. at the same time. So I'm, I'm hoping I get picked up, but you never know. Yeah, yeah well, um... I'm in the uh, Suns Academy with Case, so um, so yeah, under 16s this year, and hopefully 17s next year. But I, I mean, my dream is to play AFLW, and I'll just keep working hard. And um, you know, just I love the sport a lot. And just even if you know, if you don't get drafted, I'm still going to be playing it because that's how much I love it. So um, yeah, that's my dream, and hopefully it comes true in two years. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Now, what would be your advice to our listeners and viewers out there that should get involved in footy, especially down there at Southport in North Gold Coast? I think just to come and it's, – it's a great sport. Just come and play and have a go. And there's a lot of, you know, players in our team that are new. I think we had – I don't know how many we mm. had, but we had a lot of, you know, just young ladies just, just want to come and play AFL. And um, we've got a great club and just come play for Southport. And, uh, yeah, it's an amazing club and I absolutely love it. So, yeah, just come and play and give it a go. Well, you've seen it in our women's team this year, um, also our junior team. I think almost half of the women's team probably hadn't played footy before. And I think they've made lifelong friendships and had a love for the sport. I was talking to a few of them the other day and they've just found a love for the sport and a great team, great club. And they would recommend it to so, so many other people. Even if you don't want to get drafted and you just want to have fun, it's a great way to stay fit and enjoy the sport because really I think footy is probably one of the best sports ever. I yeah. mean, in my, yeah. my opinion. Um, but yeah, girls from other sports coming over, girls coming through Auskick, you're, you're seeing girls playing everywhere now, which is really special. So look, just have fun, have a go and go out hard. And that's all you can really ask for. Now let's finish up with a couple of lighthearted questions about your teammates. Um, <laughs> firstly, who had the most embarrassing moment on the field this season and what was it? <laughs> we've got a, we've got a couple yeah we do um, um the ground <laughs> this one's a bit of an interesting one the grounds that we were at um this year due to covid the toilets were over the other side of a different ground so um <laughs> actually at, the, at quarter time uh -huh. i really go to the bathroom so i ran into the bushes <laughs> and um bush squat so that, that was great <laughs> yeah and uh, I think, I don't know what game it was, but mm. one of our girls um, did like a little TikTok dance on the <laughs> mark. Well, and she actually missed it, I think. The yeah, girl so that was going for it. So. The Jim Boomba girl, Monet, was going for a goal and Fleur in our team. Um, she's a character and we love her, but she started doing a TikTok dance on the mark and um, the girl actually missed the goal. So I guess that yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we've had, we've had a quite a lot of fun this year on top of yeah. all the seriousness, which has been good. Yeah, who's the comedian in the team? Oh, probably yeah. myself. Come on. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I think, I don't know. We've got quite a few. We've got a bit of an interesting team dynamic. And at training, we, we have a lot of fun in the warm up and we muck around beforehand and then we get into the serious stuff. But Maggie's definitely up there. We've got a girl named Keely and she's just a laugh. Yeah, so she's, yeah, she's up there. Our whole there. team, we just, we just love to have fun. And again, we've been a real family this year. So we've got quite yeah. a few funny people on the team, yeah. which I'm pretty fortunate to have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any good singers and dancers we should know about? 
Oh, there's uh, quite a few. This one next to me. She's a <laughs> great singer. Um, oh. we got, yeah, and we've got Kiara in our team. She's a great singer. We actually wanted her to um, sing in our presentation. Yeah, sing, yeah, but she didn't. She mm. got a bit shy, but that's mm. all right. Um, yeah, we've got a lot, actually. We've got quite a few TikTok queens in our team. <laughs> <laughs> I think COVID really got the better of us with TikTok. Um, so the girls, we love to do dances in our lap for the warm up. <laughs> yeah. It's but, a lot yeah. of fun, yeah. Fleur Davis um, is definitely up there with the TikTok, yeah, TikTok for title. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, pretty much answered my question about TikTok, but on top of that, um, did you do a TikTok Premiership dance? Well, I must say, um, me and two other girls, we did a TikTok before every game throughout the year, so we did <laughs> duet, duet that <laughs> that video with our Premiership medals in the cup. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, who who was the most forgetful player on the team? Uh, we actually, probably just the Davis family, Giselle. They always would forget something, like their mouth guard and their mum would have to go and, like, um, rush home to go get it. Probably just the shorts. They always forgot, like, their shorts. They're usually, short. they're usually pretty good, but there's three of them in our team. And yes. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I think they they're pretty usually on top of it, but... There were, a, there were quite a, a few instances this season yeah. that shorts were forgotten. <laughs> uh, now, do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? Yeah. Okay, so i got to just listen to music, especially Confident, <laughs> um, by my man Justin Bieber. I love him. So i got to listen to that for every game. And, um, yeah, just a lot of music just to pump me up. And then normally I get into just like I just – go by myself and kick the footy or kick for goal. I um, like to get into the zone and um, yeah, and before the game starts and then we go as a team and yeah, just yeah. gotta have the music. I have to have a coffee every morning. Not that I, I have a coffee every morning usually without a game anyway, so <laughs> I do that. And then, yeah, I love to listen to my playlist in the car. It's a Nettie Carl playlist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we have quite a few songs in there that we like to jam to before the game, but um, my real ritual is our team warm up. So we always have a schedule that we kind of run through as a team, not to the minute, but um, the same things that we kind of do. And I like that. I enjoy getting ready all together as a group. Yeah. Uh, now you both mentioned that you're both Bombers supporters. Now, obviously the AFL uh, due to Melbourne's lockdown was uh, moved to Queensland. And obviously there was quite a few Bombers games on the Gold Coast this year. Uh, did either of you went to a Bombers game? And uh, do, you, uh, do you have a favourite Bombers player? Uh, well, yes, we went to actually quite a lot of games together, made a couple of signs um, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff to get the boys' attention. But uh, my favourite player, I got actually two, Dyson Hempel and Sam Draper. Mm -hmm. Love them too. Um, but, yeah, I just love the club. It's a great club and love watching them play, win or lose, obviously. Losing's uh, not that not that great, yeah. but um, but yeah, awesome. Um, this year, yeah, we went a lot together, but we got around the young the young boys this year. Um, so even though they didn't get heaps of games, we I really like Nettie Carl. He's a bit of a character. Yeah. Um, obviously Sam Draper, the the young boys that debuted. Um, Mozzie was pretty good this year as well, but I'm keen to see how Harry Jones goes if he makes his debut next year. So he's one of my favourites as well. So hopefully he gets a game. Now, one final one. How was the Premiership celebrations back at your place, Maggie? So, yeah, just <laughs> absolutely enjoyed it. The girls, we had the music pumping. Um, yeah, it was just unbelievable. It was awesome. And just to have the cup and when Ty arrived, it was all rowdy. It was awesome, to be honest. But um, <laughs> I, think I would live in Queensland. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do that in Victoria. Obviously, they don't have a season anyway. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Thank God we live in Queensland. Yeah. So, <laughs> Maggie's been a bit um a bit rough there. <laughs> um, and there, was, there was one point where I was on the phone to my mum, uh, just telling her about the date, obviously, because she hasn't been here. And I look over and everyone in the team, all the coaches, all the parents that were here, um, obviously we had only 30 due to COVID. Um, they were all singing We Are The Champions. <laughs> so that was probably a highlight yeah, of the night. But yeah, it was a great night just to be with the girls, have a bit of fun. Um, have the music blaring. So it was really enjoyable. It was awesome, yeah. Well, both of you, it was awesome having both on the show. Um, I know that both of you were very pumped for this interview and both of you did a fantastic job in doing that. And uh, 
congratulations from all of us here at the Smash FM on the premiership win against Broadbeach. And uh, hopefully well, I'll come up to Queensland myself and uh, again back to my home state uh, to uh, hopefully uh, get to watch both of you in action uh, for Southport in uh, 2021. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. We've really enjoyed it. Thank you. No worries. And that's Casey Maggie there, joins from the Southport Sharks uh, under-17 girls premiership team. And, of course, if you want to get down to Southport, one of the best venues on the Gold Coast, of course, uh, make sure uh, we'll put all the details up and all, on how you go about to become a premiership uh, champion down there at the Sharks. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Sunday edition.